Hey Causeway Kids, it's so good to hang out with you today. You are such a lot of fun. All this month we're looking at friendship. It's something that is really important for us and you know what? God thinks it's really important too. Friendship is using your words and actions to show others you care. Let's see what Haley's up to. I sure do have a lot of friends. I have 2,762 of them. Uh, I met this girl in kindergarten and then she moved away after that. And oh, this guy friended me after I gave him my seat on the bus. And I have no idea who this person is. Hmm. I may have 2,762 friends on here, but I think I really only know like 10 of them. I probably should have thought that through first. Anyway, real friends are people you should really know. So let me introduce myself if we haven't met. I'm Haley and I'm here to talk to you today about friendship. Friendship is using your words and actions to show others you care. You know how to tell who your real friends are? They show up in person, not just on your phone. They show up when you're happy and when you're having a party. They show up when you need help. They show up when you're sad and you need a shoulder to cry on. Real friends, your best friends, are there for you in the good times and the bad. Just like the two friends in today's story. They went through what every friendship goes through. The highs, the lows, running for your life from an angry king. Oh, okay, well, maybe not every friendship goes through that part. <gasps> I wonder if one of my 2,762 friends can fix a broken phone. Oh, I know, I'll just call someone. Oh, uh, <laughs> that's not gonna work. Haley, I'll be right back. Hey man, how you doing? Huh? You got everything? Did you bring them? Uh, you know it. Oh, how about you? Oh, of course, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> then let's do this thing. All right. <laughs> Hit it! Woo! <laughs> yeah! All right. <laughs> Build. Oh yeah! Go! Let's go! <laughs> Are you sure this is how you have a block party? Hello everyone, I'm Brandon. And I'm John, and this is The, the So and So Show. Show. On this show, John and I hang out here talking together about the world we live in. We learn a little something about God, and then we discover what it means to be human. Man, we do all that? Mm. We're good. I know, and today's no different. We've got a fun day planned, and we're gonna get started with a little game we like to call the $1,000 Triangle. John, show me the money. You don't have the money? I, I spent it all on olives. What? Never mind. okay, today, we're gonna play a little game called the 25, 26, 27, 28 dollar and 31 cent. Woo! Triangle. It's time for the 28 dollar and 31 cent triangle. All right, here's how the game works. I'm going to try and get John to guess the answer on each of these cards. Shouldn't be too tough because the category is famous duos, people or things that go together. John, are you ready to play $28.31 triangle? You bet I am, Brandon. Then let's play. <laughs> okay, here we go. Number one, uh, okay, this is something that you write with and something that you write on. Oh, a chisel and stone tablet. <laughs> no, it's a little more modern than that. Oh, a finger and an iPad. No, no, okay, think about this. This is very common. It's something you write with, something you write on. These are two things that go together. They are... The mortal and pestle! No, what? Pass, pass, next one. Uh... All right, okay, you can get this one. This is, uh, okay, these are two things that taste great between two slices of bread. Oh, what is anchovies and mayonnaise? No. 
Oh, oh, ketchup and sugar. Uh, uh, no, uh, okay, it's very, it's one of the most famous sandwiches you can oh, think oh, of. Oh, oh, to all beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun. Famous duos. Oh. Pass. Uh, oh, my. Uh, Vladimir and Estragon? Yeah. All right, uh, these, uh, okay, these are two of the coolest guys on the planet. Oh, oh who's uh, Thomas Alva Edison, who invented the incandescent light bulb, and Sammy Hagar. No. No, no, these two guys, they have a lot of fun every week and help teach people about God and the Bible. Oh, Mel Solomon and Greg. No, no these two guys are the hosts of the so-and-so show. Stephen and Lawson? No, it's the people hosting the show right now. Right now, they're also playing the game, $28.31 triangle. Uh, they are. I, 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 uh, it's me and you, John. Oh. Uh, me and you. Oh. Uh, Unbelievable. I was so close. You only got one right. But who eats peanut butter with jelly? <laughs> it's Bible story time with Kellen. Oh, man. Hello, my friends. How's it going? Pretty good, Kellen. John didn't know we were a famous duo. <laughs> oh, I thought we were a famous trio. Hey, you're right. That's why I missed it. Yeah. What story do you have for us today? Well, speaking of duos, today I want to talk about one of the most famous duos in history, David and Jonathan. And to help me do that, please welcome the So-and-So Show Players. Jonathan was the Prince of Israel. Hi, I'm Jonathan. And his dad, King Saul, was the very first King of Israel. I am King. David was Jonathan's best friend. Hi, I'm David. He killed Goliath. He was a really mean giant. David was a national hero and everyone loved him. <laughs> oh, stop. <laughs> and don't tell Saul and Jonathan this, but God had decided that David was going to be the next king of Israel. What'd he say? Uh, I'm just telling the story. Still, Jonathan loved David, and he gave his friend gifts that were good enough for a prince. Here, friend. It's my bow and arrow. <laughs> Thank you, best friend. <laughs> and my princely tunic. Mm -hmm. Thank you. you. <laughs> and mm -hmm. <sighs> my favorite pillow, <laughs> my favorite soccer ball. Thank you. <laughs> Hold on. There's more to come. And all of the important things. Oh. You'll sleep well with him. Th thank you. This will help you in a jam. Th thank you. And this will always provide the light just the way you want it. Oh, thank you. Jonathan probably didn't give David a lampshade, but you get the idea. They were best friends. Unfortunately, King Saul was jealous of David because everyone liked him so much. So King Saul sort of wanted to... Uh, Kill David. Why does your dad want to kill me? What did I do? Well, he's not going to kill you. He, dad tells me everything. He wouldn't keep something like that from me. Maybe he didn't tell you because he knows how close we are. Oh. Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, oof. Mm. What do you want me to do? Hmm. I'm supposed to eat with the king at the new moon feast tomorrow. Tell them that I couldn't make it. And if he gets mad, then you'll know for sure he's trying to kill me. Can you do that? Yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. Wait, how will I know how your father reacts? Hmm. 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 I have an oddly over-elaborate plan that might just work. Mm -hmm. You see that stone out there? Yes. I want you to wait by that stone. That's After the feast, I'll come out with a servant and I'll shoot three arrows into the field. Three. And if everything is okay, I'll say... Look, the arrows are on this side of you. And if I find out that dad wants to kill you, I'll say, look, the arrows are far, far beyond you. And if I say that, then you definitely need to run. Okay? All right? Got it? Okay. Wait, why wouldn't you just send your servant no, out there no, to no, tell no. me there's There's no time for discussion, okay? The game is in foot. Let's go. Go. On. Okay. The plan was in place. Everything was set. David had chosen not to eat with the king at the new moon feast. 
The only question was, how would King Saul react? Well, on the second night of the feast, King Saul noticed something was missing. Son? Yes, Father? Where? Yes. Is? Yes. The cat's up! Oh, um, uh, it's, uh, right here. Right, it's right here. Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> and, uh, thank you. I believe it's pronounced catch up, last I heard. Huh. Yeah, well, <laughs> the more you know. Ah. Uh, also. Where? Yes, Father. Is. Yes, the, the the mustard. Um, it's right, right, right there. <laughs> yes. uh, thank you, thank yeah, you. No problem. Mm. There's a little red, a little yellow. Makes a very mm. happy mm -hmm. fellow. Very good. Now, <laughs> oh, son. Mm. Yes, father. Uh, where's David? Um, he wanted to. Go visit his family, so I let him go. What? Uh, now, do you not realize that as long as he is alive, you will never be king? David must die! He but he hasn't done anything! <gasps> king Saul was so angry, he grabbed a spear and threw it at his own son. I'm going to throw this spear. Spear at you! No, no. You best no. run! No! You no. best run! Uh, not, not a pickle spear, an actual spear. But whatever. The spear missed Jonathan, and Jonathan had all the information that he needed. King Saul wanted to kill David. So it was time to send David the signal. Come! Unnamed servant from the Bible, let's shoot some arrows into the field for no mysterious reason whatsoever. Shall I make the sound, sire? Oh, shall you make the sound? <laughs> Don't you always make the sound? Very Thank good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> <clears throat> Very good. Very good. Mm -hmm. Woo! Excellent marksmanship, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Woo! Very good. Okay. Now, run out into the field and collect those arrows. Uh, but they're just, they're just right there. Go! Okay. Hurry! Run fast! Don't stop! The arrows are far beyond you! I feel like you're not even looking at me. Just go! Run! Have I gotten there yet? Okay, okay, okay. I'm, there we oh, Got him. Got him. <laughs> Yahtzee. All right. Okay. All right. Very well, lad. You take those weapons back to town. Okay. When the servant left, David came out of hiding and met his friend on the field. <laughs> One last time. Get up, get up, get up. Get up. Promise me you'll always be kind to my family, even after my father is gone. I promise. In the name of the Lord, you and I have made a promise to be friends. It's not only a promise between us, but between our children after us. Yes. Go in peace. By protecting David that day, Jonathan saved the life of the future king of Israel. But more importantly than that, he saved his friend. The end. How about a hand for the so-and-so show players? Uh, wow, what an incredible story. I know, Jonathan was a prince, so by saving David, he was basically giving up the throne. And that's risking amazing. his life. I mean, Jonathan really laid everything on the line for his friend. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what friends do, isn't it? They love each other. They're patient and kind. They protect each other and never give up on each other. 
It's, it's like the apostle Paul wrote in his letter to the Corinthians. Love never fails. Never? Uh, I'm not sure I'm that good of a friend. No offense. No, I'm with you. It's true. I think if we really want to love like a true friend, we're going to need God's help. He knows more about love than anyone. Well, think about it. He sent his son, Jesus, to die for us so that we would know how important we are to him. Talk about laying everything on the line. Yeah, that's so true. Thanks, Kellen. You bet. I'll catch you guys later. See ya. Bye, Kellen. So if God went out of his way to show us how important we are to him, and if Jonathan went out of his way to show David how important he was, what, what does that mean for us? Don't ask me, ask them. All right, reveal the question. How can you show your friends they're important? Yeah, yeah, what are some ways you can show your friends they're important to you? Yeah, uh, maybe give them a wrapped apple. A wrapped apple? Now yeah, they're healthy. Or maybe spend time with them. Oh, you don't even have to wrap the apple if you don't want to. Just talk about it together. How can you show your friends they are important? Y you know, you've never even once given me an apple. I'm Brandon. Uh, and I'm John. And this was The So-and-So Show. Not even mashed or sauced. By, you would want a mashed apple? For, Absolutely. Like Haven't you ever had a mashed apple? What are you doing, Brandon? Oh, I'm just taking a stroll around the block. Boo, 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 boo. Hey, you know what this is? Eh? It's a chip off the old block. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, stop being a stumbling block. I'll knock your block off, blockhead. <gasps> you got any more? No, I, I've got writer's block. Wouldn't it be cool to have a friendship as strong as David and Jonathan's? Those guys would do anything for each other. Jonathan even risked his life to protect David, but that's what friends do. They love each other no matter what. Okay, okay, not that kind of love. I'm talking about the kind of love this guy Paul wrote about in one of his letters. You can find the letter in your Bible. It's called the Book of 1 Corinthians. You wanna know what love is? Here's some of what Paul wrote. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not brag. It is not proud. It does not easily become angry. It always protects. It always trusts. It always hopes. It never gives up. Love never fails. That's how you show love to a friend. You're not impatient with them. You don't get angry easily. You protect them and you stand up for them. And you never ever fail. Wait, love never fails? That seems kind of difficult. The truth is, for us, it's kind of impossible to love without failing. If you really want to love your friends the way God wants you to love, you're going to need God's help. After all, he knows more about love than anyone. He loved us so much that he sent his only son, Jesus, to die on a cross for our sins. And with God's help, you can love people more than you could ever do by yourself. So the one thing to remember today is this. Friends love one another. Sometimes friends fail, but that's okay. Friends also forgive, which is a good thing because because this was my friend Erica's phone and I think she's gonna be like, and I'm gonna be like, Arr! and then we'll laugh about it <laughs> because she's a real friend and so am I. So I'm gonna find a way to get her a new phone. I think I'll show up and tell her in person I mean, it's not like I'm gonna call her or text her. <laughs> okay, goodbye friends. See you next time. There are so many ways to be a good friend. You can hold the door open for them. You can let them go first. You can make them laugh. You can be there for them if they've had a sad day and you can get to know them. How well do you know your friends? Do you know? 
welcome to Do You Know? Today we will be competing to see how well you know your friends. Can you answer the questions before they do? First up, what's your favourite colour? Your time starts now! It's pink! Green. Blue. My favourite colour is red. Did you get any right? Here's your next question. What's your favourite ice cream? My favourite ice cream flavour is strawberry. Gold Rush. Either vanilla or chocolate. My favourite ice cream flavour is hokey pokey and chocolate and vanilla. How are you doing? Next question. What's your favourite animal? Pig. Um, a dog or a leopard? Um, my favourite animal would be monkey, seagull, tiger. Well played! Here's your last chance. Favourite movie? The Secret Garden. Uh, uh, Star Wars. Um, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Um, my favourite movies would probably be Karate Kid. Um, yeah. Do you know your friends? That's all for this week. I'm your quiz master, Lockie Millard, and this has been Do You! Being a friend is like being a secret agent. There are so many ways to help them feel loved. One way is to give them gifts. This here is for my friend Jan. She loves lavender and lemons and tea. And this is a special jam that has all of them. And I know that flowers like these will make my friend Christy feel really, really special. And this chocolate, well, my friend Malcolm, he will really love to get this chocolate. He just loves chocolate. Hey, how well do you know your mum and dad? Or your brothers and your sisters? What makes them feel loved? Oh, here's another thing. What is Pastor Colin's favorite ice cream flavor? If you know the answer and you're the first to get back to me on that one, I'll deliver a container of ice cream to you and another one to Pastor Colin. One way to make people feel loved is by giving gifts. Another way is words of encouragement, kind words. Another way is just to sit and spend time with them. Or you might do stuff for them, or it might simply be a hug or a fist bump. So many ways to help people feel loved and appreciated. Our memory verse reminds us that a friend loves at all times. Let's check out the memory verse motions with Ryder and Jemima. A friend loves at all times. They, they are there to help when trouble ah comes. Proverbs 17, 17. Did you get the part about being there for your friends when trouble comes? When you know them really well, it's easier to help them when they're just not going so well. How well do you know your friends and family? If you have a dice handy, here's a really quick game that will help you to get to know your family better. It's really fun. So grab a dice, grab your family, press pause, and let's go for it. A 
friend loves. Now the word love is an action. It's a verb, something that you do. I'll be looking out for ways this week that I can show my friends and family just how much I love them. I wonder what you could do. Have a great week experimenting and seeing what makes your friends and family feel loved. See you next week.